Hey guys, welcome me, welcome you. No, that is the wrong channel. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's me, Eric, one of the education specialists for Eastern Banks Learning and Life Center. Thank you so much for coming back for another video. For those that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like this video, comment, share this video. Do not forget to click the notification bell in the top corner to be notified of when we drop new videos, which is every single week. For those that have already been a part of our journey here on YouTube, thanks for coming back for another video. We would like to say a big thank you to our latest subscriber here. Thank you so much for joining our channel and being part of our journey in the gardens and with all the work that we do as a nonprofit. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a little unboxing here. We got a free uh, delivery from Baker Creek Seed Company and we want to say thank you to them. Um, for sending these seeds over and we're gonna do a quick it's, it won't be long they there are a lot of seeds in here but a lot of these seed packets um, have a lot of repetition because they sent over a, a lot of the same variety and types of vegetable seeds so we're just gonna get right into it okay so first off we have a few flowers that I'm gonna show you guys Packets are vegetables that we have not grown before and I've been pretty excited to grow, but I just haven't had the opportunity to actually purchase these seeds for the students. We have our lovely sweet pea flowers. Now, sweet peas, you may be thinking, oh, these are like the sweet peas that you harvest, like the snap peas, but no. These are actually a toxic flower if you were to ingest them. So these are pretty much just for sh just for show. And they also have a great scent to them. Next flowers that we have are the Siberian wallflower. I've seen another garden, I think it was Epic Gardening here on YouTube. They grew wallflowers. I do believe they grew wallflowers. It was either them or another YouTube channel. They grew wallflowers. It wasn't this exact variety. This year, well, not this year. We're almost at the end of 2023. We are at the, it's December 2nd. Wow, we've been wanting to grow cut flowers, not only to show the students the variety of plants out there besides just vegetables, but to also provide these flowers to mothers on Mother's Day, Grandparents Day, any special occasion for our students and the faculty. Another batch of flowers that we have are the Baby's Breath uh, Covent Garden. Next up, we have Coxcomb Indiana Giant. Now this plant, I've always seen at Lowe's or Home Depot or at our local garden center. They look very gross. They look like brains, but they're, they're pretty and they have a very vibrant color to them. And I know that they can take over an area. So we're gonna also add this to our pollinator garden. This is the Coreopsis Incredible Dwarf Mix. I think these are related to sunflowers i'm not sure i know i've seen them in a multitude of youtube gardeners videos so i'm really excited to grow these because i know just like zinnias and marigolds these will be everywhere throughout the garden as soon as those seeds fall to the ground all right so these are the last seeds that we have in terms of flowers these are the cosmos candy floss red Flower. All right, now we're gonna move on to actual vegetables. This tomato, they sent over a lot of them. The, uh, the mortgage lifter tomato. It's a, I believe this is like a, a beef steak tomato from West Virginia. So hopefully this grows well here in Georgia. I know you're, you're typically supposed to grow things. You can grow anything, but for the best result, I guess you could say, in your garden, it's best to grow things that typically would grow in your area, whether you're in Texas, Colorado, New Mexico. We have a long spring, a long summer, and we can roughly grow until now, which is December 2nd. We actually have a lot of different fall crops in the garden right now still being harvested. As far as beef steak, large, large tomatoes, we have not yet had a great success rate with that. So hopefully, 
starting 2024, we will. Tomato, we have, that's a pepper. The orange jazz tomato. Now, again, like the mortgage lifted tomato, we have a bunch of these seeds here. These are a beef steak again, another beef steak tomato. Uh, and they have a crisp texture and complex flavor. So hopefully these do well here in our garden. This is the Woods Famous Brimmer tomato. We only have one packet of these. So we may just plant this entire packet this upcoming spring. Again, it's another, I don't think this is a beef steak, but it's a large tomato. So fingers crossed that we are able to grow another large tomato. Next up, we're gonna do squash. Okay, we have a few new squash varieties that have been added to our repertoire. And we are really excited to grow these varieties. Now, all of these varieties in this free seed hall are new varieties to us. Besides, you know, the, uh, the celery, it's pretty much the same. But every for everything else, it's all new varieties. We have three squash varieties. And we're gonna start off with the rouge. I don't know how you can, I know this is French. It has to be French. Rouge Vif de Thompes, okay. <laughs> uh, the scientific name is Curcurbita Maxima. It's one of those large circular pumpkins. It has a deep red, deep orange color to it. And these are very pretty. And I know most people use these as like decorations in front of their house, in the garden. There are a lot of seeds. We have four packets, so we're gonna be growing a lot of squash next year. These are our lemon squash. I'm gonna grow these with the students on a trellis. Since they are fairly small, we wanna be able to grow them in a compact area to maximize our growing space. So these will be perfect for, this, for that. The last squash we have is the Gerardel uh, squash. It's a green, greenish, grayish pumpkin. And it's grown in Australia. It's, pop, it's popular in Australia. These are a lot of seeds. I didn't think we were gonna have so many seeds. Um, next up, let's do root crops. I clearly looked over there. This, these are the small, little, cute, jacky little squash. I can't wait to grow these. We're gonna grow a bunch of these. Also, we, we're gonna have a video coming Fairly soon, fairly soon. <laughs> Over by the wind tunnel, we have, uh, it's, I would say like, dimensions. Uh, roughly 20 feet by eight feet of space by the wind tunnel that we have ripped up. Well, not ripped up, that's, that's violent. Um, we're transplanted plants like kale, switch chard to other places in the garden because that particular area we want to till, we've been tilling, but we just have to finish the process. Tilling, add more soil and more organic components to that area to prepare it for the spring and the summer moving forward. We're thinking of using that area next year specifically for the three sisters and flowers, but the corn, squash, and green beans. So, these will be a very cute plant to grow in that area. Okay, so we have a few root crops to discuss. We have the corral carrot, a pretty carrot, uh, a miniature carrot. We have a lot of carrots that get to about six to eight inches long, and these, this is one of those carrots. I don't remember what variety of carrots these are, but again, these are carrots that don't get any longer than like six to eight inches. So we like to grow them in buckets like this. The next carrot, well, root crop that we have are the cosmic purple carrots, which are so pretty. And I've always wanted to grow colored carrots besides just like, you know, the normal orange carrot. But these have a nice deep purple coloring to them. The last carrot are the ox heart carrots. We're mostly gonna grow these in our raised beds since they don't go too deep, but they grow wider. So 
these will be a great practice carry for the students. Next up we have the Texas Early Grano, 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 I don't know, uh, onion. These onions we've already grown before, we've already harvested. If you have not watched uh, our how-to, I think we did a how-to video, or was it a life cycle? No, we haven't done a life cycle video for the onions yet. I think we did do a how-to and harvest video for onions. So just go check out those videos here and you can learn how to grow your own onions. But last year, earlier this year, yeah, earlier this year, we planted Texas early onions. We purchased them from a Texas farm. I will put the name of the Texas farm below. You can try them out if you're interested in growing onions. Lastly, we have these. Celeriac, I think that's how you pronounce it. Giant Prog. I do believe, oh my God, these seeds are so fragrant. You literally, it smells like celery. I believe these, aren't these like the roots of celery? It's a popular European root celery introduced in 1871. Grown for large white roots that are superb fried or in soup. We have the golden Chinese cabbage here. We already have Chinese cabbage in the garden, so that's awesome that we have more seeds. Stowell evergreen corn. Here, we've had trouble growing the corn. As soon as the corn gets to like six to seven feet, the aphids come, they start to attack the tassels, and it's really hard to have the pollen come and fertilize the silks, which, you know, promotes growth of the corn. So hopefully a different variety will change that. Also, if you know of any corn varieties that are, what's the word? What's the word that I'm looking for? They're not prone to like the attacks of aphids. Just let us know in the comments, please. Next up we have Gillet peppers. These are a spicy uh, petite pepper. Are these spicy? No, they're not spicy. They're not spicy, but you can grow these in buckets. As you see behind me, we have peppers in buckets right there, and we have more peppers over here. This week or next week, we'll have another video on our channel discussing the overwintering methods that we have taken for our peppers, because moving forward, we will have peppers in the garden in terms of like in ground, but most of our peppers will be harvested from pepper plants that are in buckets because we've just seen that peppers growing in buckets versus in ground, the buckets just do something for the peppers. So we are just gonna stick to growing our peppers in buckets. We have long bean Chinese red noodle. It's just a long growing bean. Choi Sun, which is a brassica. It's related to the mothering Mustard plant, we have Amsterdam celery as well as giant red celery. And the giant, it just ha it's just like red Swiss chard. You know, you have the regular green Swiss chard and then you have the red Swiss chard with the pink stem. And this is the same thing. And we have three packets of our, how do you say this? Forellen slush. It's a type of lettuce. It's like a, a, a variegated speckled lettuce. It resembles butternut, not butternut, but the butter, what's that called? The lettuce that has like the buttery glaze, not glaze, but like feel to it. Butter crunch, that's it, butter crunch lettuce. Mini Bell mixed pepper packet. So we have two varieties of okra. We have the Louisiana 16 inch long pie okra, as well as the Nkrumah Tintin okra, which comes in a variety of colors, looks like. The main colors look like green or dark purple and red. So this will be very interesting. We have basil, blue spice basil, as well as the cardinal basil. Peppers, we have this variety called Lesa, Lesia. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a sweet pepper. 
it's, they claim it's the sweetest of all peppers, so we will verify if that's true or not. <laughs> we have spinach, uh, this premium flat Dutch spinach, uh, cabbage that we've never grown before. We have three packets with a lot of, a lot of seeds in it, so we're gonna try these out next, well, in the spring. We have asparagus. I've been want, wanting to have our own asparagus patch. So we have a very long row on this side of the greenhouse. Towards the end of it, that is where we're gonna grow our asparagus or have our asparagus patch. We already know, if you don't know, asparagus can really spread itself if it has the opportunity to and the space to do so. So we're gonna do our best to contain it to that area because if not, it will be throughout the entire garden. So we're gonna do our best to keep it in that patch that we provided. Last up, we have some legumes. We have the Super Magnolia Tendril Sweet Pea and Thai Long Green Arugula Wasabi, which I did not know. I mean, it's common sense, but I didn't know that you could grow your own wasabi. So we're gonna try this and make our own wasabi. Soy bean, soya beans, which is a, a, the edamame. This is the Chiba green variety. We have a, another long bean, the snake bean, Indian giant variety, and we have the orak or orach, depending on how you pronounce it, red variety. And this is related, uh, related to like a spinach. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We hope that you learned something. We hope that you got inspired to grow new varieties of plants from this particular haul. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, of course. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Share this video with those interested in gardening, even if they have a tinkling of interest. Share this video with them. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at EBLLCINC and on TikTok at Project Grape. Thank you guys so much for your viewing. Check out these other videos and we will see you later in the garden. Bye.